Well, you know, uh, Paul, I'm glad you brought up the 1990s because I think that is a great example of how bipartisanship worked. I will, I'll say forced bipartisanship worked because in 1993, Republicans like myself, conservatives like myself said, the world's coming to the end, uh, the biggest tax cuts ever, we're going to sink into a depression. Two years later, Republicans were elected and we cut spending. And Democrats said the world's coming to an end, a depression's well, going to come on, people are going to be thrown out in the streets. By the end of the decade, we saw you had Democrats doing things that in the long run brought down the deficit and helped. Republicans doing the same thing. Isn't that an example of how we need to have a more mixed approach and not just go all left or all right in these times of crises? Look at, look at what just happened. Uh, we just had a proposal, I think it was McCain's proposal, for an economic recovery package, his version of it, which was all tax cuts, a complete, let's do exactly what Bush did, have another round of Bush-style policies after right. eight years in which that didn't work. And, and that, we got 36 right. out of 41 Republican senators voting for that, which is completely crazy. So how much bipartisan outreach can you have when 36 out of 41 Republican senators take their marching orders I know, from but, Rush but, Limbaugh? Paul, I'm, just, I'm just talking to you, though. We're not talking about Rush Limbaugh or John McCain. I'm no, talking are. to you as an economist. As an no, economist, we had, look, I, 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 well, we had is, in this, is there not a chance that some Republican ideas may be positive and some Democratic ideas may be positive? Or do Democrats really want to destroy America, as your column suggested this morning? Um, look, the, again, 36 out of 41 Republicans voted for a completely disastrously wrong-headed policy. Now, can we reach out? I mean, Cl um, Clinton, uh, um, Obama has got to have a couple of Republican votes to get this stuff through. He can certainly listen, and there is. You know, there are some stuff in the bill that does not look like standard Democratic stuff. There are some business tax cuts that I'm not too happy with, but, you know, we can live with those. So there has been some outreach, but the main thing is we've had one, you know, what, what the president said. We've had uh, a style of policy. We tried it for eight years. It came out really badly. We can't go on doing the same well, thing. We have to well, change George, direction. Right, right. Right. Let, let, let me just say, though, George Bush, over the past eight years, had the most disastrous spending policy. They decided to cut taxes. They decided to increase uh, the deficits. They in decided to increase entitlement spending while they were fighting two wars. They made no tough decisions whatsoever. You can't say that that's the traditional conservative right. approach to economics. It was a disaster. And I think we can all agree with that, can You've we not? You've got some mythical image of what a modern conservative is. Reagan increased spending while cutting taxes. Bush increased spending while cutting taxes. Well, uh, who are you? Uh, no, wait, wait, which, who is, who is your on, ideal go. here? Well, uh, well, hold on. Let, let me give you my idea. I'm my idea. When we no, came in in 1995, hold on a second. You talk about mythical conservatives. When we came in in 1995, we were forced to work with Bill Clinton. He pushed for tax cuts. We pushed for spending cuts. We fought it every step of the way. And no. in the end, Republicans and Democrats together balanced a budget that everybody said couldn't be balanced. Well, and let's, the let's wait. Exploded. Let me Paul? say something about this. In, in the 90s, the gridlock. The, the partisan divide actually had the effect that neither, neither side got what it wanted. It didn't get any further spending increases, didn't get any further tax cuts, and at the time that was an okay mix of policy. So as it, as it happened, the partisan divide, it wasn't really bipartisanship, it was gridlock. It was the fact that neither side could get much of what it wanted. That well, was it, okay, it, it, but you know, it, it was balancing the budget. Powers, Paul. Balancing That's the budget. Yeah. separation of powers. Right, right. But, it, but, it, but it turned out that the harsh divide between the parties meant that nothing much happened, and it's it happened the 90s was good stuff was coming along there was a lot of technology that was we had a nice economic boom and we could trust Uncle Alan Greenspan to manage the economy we're not in that world right now Ben Bernanke can do no more he's cut the interest rate to zero doing nothing is not an option right now doing nothing almost guarantees this is going to be a catastrophe and we really have to have forceful action and there there was never much bipartisanship what there was was a divide, and at this point we have, well, a Republican Party that, except for a few members, is committed to just doing more of what we did during the last eight years. Obama's got to disregard that. Well, it, it was, uh, I, I think the 1990s, there, there, I don't know that there was gridlock, there was a separation of powers and uh, a division of authority, which I, I personally think worked well, but 
Um, anyway, I do agree with you in, in one aspect. We need a bold step. Halfway exactly. measures aren't going to get us out of here. You know, 